Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I want to show you how to make an animated customizable banner in Blender. You will learn how to change the textures as well as changing the speed of the wind. It's going to be fairly quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by switching from Blend Render to Cycles Render for better shading. And then click X to delete the uh, default cube. Click Shift A and add a plane, which is going to be the banner. Then click S, X, then 1.8 to scale the uh, plane 1.8 times on the x-axis. And I click R, Y, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis. Now let's go into edit mode to add more vertices. So switch from object mode to edit mode. And I click W to subdivide. And then increase the number of cuts to about 40, which I think is enough. And then let's select the uh, top vertices. And the vertices you choose will be the immobile vertices. So uh, when we add wind to the scene, these vertices will not move. So uh, just select the vertices that you want to uh, stand still, and uh, then we will add it to the simulation later. Okay, so I ended up selecting almost all of the vertices on the top, but uh, you can choose as many as you want. So uh, let's go into the uh, vertices settings and add this as a vertex group which we'll use later. So just click Assign, and then we can go back to Object Mode. To uh, go back to Object Mode, click Tab. Okay, so now we can go to the next step, which is to add Wind. So click Shift A, and add a force field, and Wind. So click G to uh, grab the wind, and then click R to rotate. And you always confirm actions with uh, a left click. R set to rotate it on the set axis, and G again to grab. Okay, and then go into the uh, wind settings, and then increase the strength to about 30. If you want it to be stronger, just increase the value. And I'm also going to add some noise to the wind. So I will increase the value to about three. I would say the value of the strength is the most important part. So uh, now let's select the uh, banner. And for the banner, we're going to use the uh, class simulator which also interacts with the wind. So select the cloth, and then change the presence to uh, silk, and then change the mass to around 3, and the bending to around 25. Some of these values are kind of random, so you don't have to follow them completely, but if you want the same result as me, you should uh, follow these uh, values. So select pinning, and then select the group that we added earlier so that uh, the flag doesn't fall down, or the banner doesn't fall down. So if you click play now, you will see that we have the simple banner animation. And before I add the uh, banner design to the banner, I'm going to uh, add a wall in the background, as well as uh, something to hold the banner. So uh, to add a new plane, you just need to click Shift A, and then click R, Y, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. And then we need to grab it, so click G, then X to grab it on the X axis. If you have a strong win value, you might also want to change the location for the wall on the X axis even more in case that they uh, collide. So click S to scale, and then click S, then Y to scale it on the Y axis. And now what I'm going to do next is to add a pole for the banner. You can skip this part if you want to, but uh, I'm just going to add a few cylinders so that uh, it at least looks like it's holding up the banner. So uh, let's rotate the cylinders. Click R, X, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Then go into edit mode and we're going to select these two faces. Hold in shift to select multiple faces and then click N, increase the mean curves value to 1. And then add a subdivision surface modifier. And that way, you can add the subdivision surface modifier without smoothing out the whole object. What we need to do next is to grab it on the uh, set axis to make sure it's uh, at the right height compared to the banner. So click G and then set to grab it on the set axis. And then we need to scale it on the Y axis so that the pole becomes longer. So click S then Y to scale it on the uh, Y axis. Okay and even more. I still think it's a little bit thick, so click S, then Shift Y to scale it only on the X and Z axis. Depending
depending on how strong the wind in your simulation is, you might also want to change the X location for the wall to make sure it's close enough to the pole. So I'm just going to grab it a bit on the X axis, click G, then X to adjust the location on the X axis. Then I'm going to add a uh, new cylinder, which is going to be the support cylinders. So uh, let's go into edit mode, go to face select and select both faces and then increase the uh, min increase value to one and then add the subdivision surface modifier once again. Okay, and then we can scale it down, so click S to scale. And then we need to grab it to the end of the pole. So click G set to grab it on the set axis, scale it down even further. And then click R, Y, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. Click S to scale it down and then click S, then X to scale it on the X axis. Click G, then X to grab it on the X axis. Okay, so now it's finally time to uh, move it to the end of the pole. So uh, just make sure it has the right size. And then click G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis. Okay, then G, then Y again, around here, and then add a new modifier, and this is going to be the array modifier, which uh, duplicates the object, and then moves it on the Y axis, if you change it to the Y axis. So let's set the X value to zero, and then we uh, decrease the Y value, and then increase the number, which is the count. So just make sure it ends at the end of the pole, so around here and then we can finally go to the next part which is to add the lighting so uh, select the sun and then change the size to one to make the sun stronger just increase the strength so i set it to about seven and i click g then r to rotate the sun so let's make the first save i'm just going to call this um, let's call it banner i think this is a good time to save because we now have everything we need for setting up the banner design. So if you click Shift Set, you will see that the scene now has lighting because we added the sun. So uh, the next step of the tutorial is to select the banner and start adding the design. And to add a image to a plane like this one, you need to unwrap the object. So click Tab to go into object mode and then click A to select all faces. And then let's open a new window and change this one to the uh, UV image editor. Then click U to unwrap, and then you can open the image that you want to use. And if you want to use the same images as me, you can just download the folder in the description where uh, you get all of these uh, Skyrim banners from the Skyrim game. So let's start with the first one, and then open the image, and it's automatically going to adjust to the image that you add. And then you go to the material settings, click new. And then let's select the, uh, let's change it to image texture. And then make sure to add this image that you already unwrapped. And then for materials, I like to set it to glossy and then increase the uh, roughness to about 0.65, which I think looks good. And as you can see, we also need to um, rotate the unwrapping. So uh, to rotate the unwrapping you need to have the cursor above the UV image editor and then you need to click R, X, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And then you need to scale it on the X axis, so click S, then X to scale the unwrapping on the X axis. And try to make sure it um, covers the whole flag. And now we need to scale it on the y-axis, which is upwards. So click S, then Y to scale it on the y-axis. Okay, so now we have the first banner. And what I'm going to spend the rest of the tutorial doing is first to add some materials to the wall and the uh, holder for the banner. And then I'm going to add additional banners and show you how you can do it even faster once you have one banner. So uh, let's select the pole first and then change the material to principled. And principled is a new material from Blender 2.79. So um, let's uh, change the color to be a dark black color. 
and then increase the uh, clear coat value to around 0 0.5. When it comes to the materials for the walls and the uh, pole, it doesn't really matter that much, so you can add whatever materials or uh, colors you want. So um, I'm just showing you this so that you can copy if you want it to look similar to uh, my animation. So uh, I might just adjust a few values, just see what it looks like before I add the same material to the wall. So select the wall, then just let's make sure it's selected, and then just add the same material. As you can see, the material is a little bit too glossy, so uh, let's just uh, increase the roughness value before we go on to the next step of the tutorial. And the next step of the tutorial is to add more banners. So uh, let's just go to uh, one of the first frames and then duplicate the banner. So select it and then click Shift D to uh, duplicate, then click Y, then click minus 2.5 to grab the uh, duplication 2.5 units on the Y axis. And then left click to confirm. And then um, you need to click the plus sign and then select a new image so that we get the same uh, material but with a new image and uh, this becomes a new material. Okay, and I click Shift Set, and as you can see, we now have the second banner. So let's duplicate this one uh, one more time. So click Shift D, then Y, then minus 2.5. Then make a new material based on the last one by clicking the plus sign, and then open the last image. Okay, and by clicking Shift Set, you will see that we now have all of the three banners. And what I usually like to do when I have uh, multiple banners or flags is to bake the animation. As you can see, if we go back to uh, solid view first, so shift set, and then play the animation. Let's just play it from the beginning. We still have the animation, but uh, it's usually a bit slower, so it's nice to have baked the animation, which means that the computer has calculated all the movements beforehand. So select all of them, and then go to the uh, cloth catch, and then click bake all dynamics. I actually misclicked in this uh, recording, but uh, if you want to calculate the movement of all of the uh, banners, you need to click bake all dynamics. It's just nice to have it all calculated before you render, because when you render, they are going to be calculated anyways. So let's just move the pole on the y-axis a bit, and uh, now it's time to set up the camera. So I uh, click numpad 0 to see through the camera, then select it by clicking right click, and I click shift F to use the fly cam. And you can move around with W, A, S, and D, just like in a video game on your computer. When it comes to the camera placements, you can just choose wherever location you want in the scene. It doesn't really matter. And uh, I might also change the location of the uh, pole so that uh, it fits within the frame. Okay, and make sure to add the same material for the supporting poles as well. And this is what it looks like. Now, we're almost done with the tutorial, so uh, now it's time to make the final adjustments. And uh, first off, I want to change the location of the camera to be a little bit below the banners to make them look uh, larger. There's actually one more step in the tutorial which is important, and that is to add some uh, volume to the uh, objects. So add the subdivision surface modifier first, and then add the solidify modifier to give it some volume. So uh, subsurface and then solidify for all of these uh, three uh, banners. Okay, so now we're very close to the end of the tutorial. As you can see, we have the cloth animation with the uh, textures, which we downloaded from the internet, and also some volume to the banners by using the uh, solidify modifier. Okay, so let's start uh, changing the render settings and let's start off by changing the start frame so that we don't see the first movements of the banner. And then increase the resolution quality to 100% and then change the render device to GPU if you have one and if you have only a CPU, you can just use the CPU. And then change the output and make a new folder on your computer so that all of the rendered images end up on this uh, folder and then select the folder and give the uh, images a name. So I'm just going to call them Toots 
and then change the sampling to a higher value if you want it to look better. So change it to 250. Select the clock icon, which is the animated seed. And uh, if you have a GPU, you might also want to increase the size of the tiles. But if you only have a CPU, that's okay. You can just keep it at the same value. So uh, let's select denoising as well to denoise the render. Let's make a test render first. So uh, this is what the uh, render looks like, and I think it looks good enough. So uh, let's render it out as an animation. And how long it takes to render depends on the uh, power of your computer, but it's probably not going to take that much time because it's not that many frames. So uh, let's click animation. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So uh, leave a like and subscribe.